This is 2OF Entertainment. Okay. Well, good afternoon or good morning. Good evening, Paul. I'm good day, never quite yeah. sure. That... Good day again. So, Another great week yeah. coming up here. And uh, yeah, super to be you. back on a show with you. I haven't been on, I haven't been on many shows this year with you. So well, it's we're, we're to... you know, time change, you know, and uh, we're <laughs> time, doing everything time moving change. along. Yeah. You being yeah. in uh, in Netherlands and myself in Canada. So yeah. This is a great opportunity to, yeah, nice talking with you and seeing what's going on in the, around the world. Anyway, we'll share what we've got going on in Canada with uh, our following here a little bit. And uh, today we have, I always say that, I always say that we got this great guest. And you know what? Truly, truly we do have an exceptional artist again today. And uh, she does stuff um, that is quite different than most artists do. She does, yes, she does landscapes and portraits and uh, and different things, but it's the media she works in. She's an encaustic artist. She works with uh, oil. Okay. oil Explain that a little bit to, to people like myself, Paul. Well, encaustic is the use of oil and wax together, and you use hot okay. air gun, and you, with heat, you move it around, but you can, you will not believe the kind of imagery, quite realistic imagery you can create, but it has a unique texture, um, but it has some hazards that we'll talk about health hazards you got to take care of yourself when you do this process um kathy bradshaw is uh is our guest artist and she is uh, a bfa grad and she mostly she does a lot of after that she was a teacher for years a phys ed teacher um and then she took her mfa and uh she now does i guess self-directed workshops She'll choose who she wants to study with, takes residencies. We're going to talk about a really couple of unique residencies she's had. It's full of pack full of information today. So hang okay, on. Well, Let's bring Kathy in. Yeah, like I said, I did not make, make space for her straight away. She is. Hello, Kathy. Hi. Yes. Good day. Look at that studio. It's just beaming with. With yeah. artwork, she's got it all cleaned up today. I, I cleaned it up. <laughs> yeah, you know, like when you're having company over, that's when you clean your house, right? So, right, right. <laughs> right. Look, guys, I'm going to leave you to uh, to do your, your, the the art thing today, and um, well, I'll come back at the end of the show, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll no doubt we'll have some questions because I'm always okay. here. So, <laughs> well, enjoy the show. Well. Enjoy the show. <laughs> yeah. We'll Thank talk you. Talk to you later. Well, this is. A great opportunity. I mean, I, I, uh, we've talked before in the past mm -hmm. about some of your processes and things, and we, now we have this real opportunity to share it with other people. And I, I think it's uh, it's unique. Not everybody does what you do. Can you explain a little bit about, I guess, where you've been and what you're doing, and uh, yeah. the, the process of of encaustic mm -hmm. painting? A little bit. Oh. Just, yeah, when I, when I was in university, um, I took a class. That's how it all started. I took a class from the late, great Paul Hamilton. It was called Hands-On Art History. And we had to research an ancient medium, and we had to uh, reproduce an ancient artifact. And uh, But we couldn't go to the store and buy it ready-made. We had to learn how to make it from scratch. Mm -hmm. So I had to find a beekeeper and then um, some Damar resin and figure out the formula, figure out, you know, the, the recipes and how to color it, how to work with it. And in the end, um, I recreated a, a mummy mask. Like um, I have the example here. Like um, So this would be <laughs> um, a reproduction of a fam portrait. Um, these were placed over the faces of the, of the mummies in Greco-Roman Egyptian era, about 500 uh, BC to 500 AD kind of. And um, they were unearthed in the late 1800s, I believe. And there's thousands of them actually. And they're all 
in in remarkably pristine condition, most of them. And so <clears throat> it, it's a testament to the longevity of um of this medium. So the idea was that at the time people had their portraits, wealthy people would have their portraits painted, placed over their face um, when they died, and they would take this image into their afterlife. So they were, would forever remain beautiful. <laughs> oh, nice. so. Well, what's really nice about this, it's an ancient uh, yes. process that hmm. you've rejuvenated it as your own and mm -hmm. contemporary art. Um, yeah. as a medium. So most people just squeeze the paint out of the tube and paint. Oil, so <laughs> most yeah. of us artists do they like the pre the pre-prepared way of doing things yeah uh, but i think within caustic there is some pre-prepared stuff that you can yeah yeah it's labor labor intensive for sure yeah. um many hours are spent melting the wax down adding the damar resin um you end up with kind of like a like a uh, soupy kind of mix it's okay. it's, it's thick and I pour it into high-tech muffin thin tins, and then um, and then those are placed into uh, high-tech cat food metal tins on my palette, and it's melted down. And then from there, I add the colorant. So it's either oil paint or powdered pigments to get to get the color. So so you, you basically your your palette is a hot plate. Yes, it is. Basically, yes, it is. It keeps everything warm yes. while it's melting. Kind of melts all the stuff down into the liquid wax. Yes. Right? Yeah. So it's yeah. it's applied in a, in a molten state, mm -hmm. and then the wax cools quite quickly. Um, so th that's a challenge because when I'm working large, you know, and I'm trying to pull the wax over to the other end of the painting, in the meantime, you know, it's sort of solidifying. So. I have to paint upside down, sideways. You know, I'm always turning my my uh, substrate. So I'm gonna get David. Dave, I'm gonna get David to launch our first image here. Um, <laughs> and there we go. We're yeah. talking. You you mentioned painting large. So going. Yes. So that's why I want people to see what look yeah. this sumptuous color and textures in this thing. It's yeah. it's amazing. Uh, yeah. So, so that's. 30 by 60, I think. So yeah. it's 60 inches across. So I would have painted that upside down, sideways, you know, turning it all the time. So this, the liquid is moving all the time, right? It, the more heat it gets in the air, it blows the colors yeah. together. And do, yeah. do you work in layers on this? On yes, I do. Yes. Like, um, you know, you, a kind of an all over I, I approach it like a oil painter I start with my darks and then um and then local color sort of I build up you know an all over layer that is fused and then you layer and you fuse it's a process of layering fusing you have to fuse in order to make it permanent the top layer has to fuse to the bottom layer um so that it's you know so that it's together otherwise right. over time if you just layered wax on top of wax it would peel off oh, so okay. the fusing the heat application either through a heat gun or a blowtorch melts all the layers together and then they become one so that becomes your brush basically is the yeah your yeah like hot air gun yeah yeah. Right. Most most encaustic artists use a a blowtorch, mm -hmm. um, but I I started with a heat gun. I've tried the blowtorch. I do in some cases when I'm working really large. It covers a great area, but um, I like the heat gun because um, I mean I with practice I guess I can control it better. But also the fact that it blows and I use the blowing to move the wax around. Right. So, so I do a lot of um it becomes my like my brush. You know uh, how you when you're brushing on a painting and you're blending, I use the heat gun to blend and to move things around. Yeah. So people are understanding this is a a shaggy coo like a cow. Right. Yeah, <laughs> long horns, and uh, you yeah. can really feel the coat in, yeah. in the cow. Um, yeah. Is this like a Scottish cow? 
Yes, it is. Yeah, we went to Scotland and this guy was standing in the middle of the road looking at us. Uh, so we wow. really couldn't pass him. So we took a few <laughs> pictures. <laughs> yeah, he became famous. Uh, yeah, they're so yeah. unique. I mean, we have cows in Canada, but they don't they don't look like this at all. They just, yeah. you know, we have the, they don't have the, the hair on them like this. You know? No, but they, so, there, there are a few coming to Canada now. Oh yeah. There are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, the, mm -hmm. uh, we can get into cattle and different things, but uh, we won't talk. Yeah. About them. yeah. <laughs> they're just so nice to paint though. So many artists do like painting cows. I mean, they're quite patient. Yeah. They'll yeah. sit there and, and look at you. And yeah, they, where a lot of other animals is move yeah. along, they are skitterish, yeah. but cows are curious. Yeah. And uh, this this must one was looking at a Canadian. This one it was just yeah. Up, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll move into. Uh, we're going through a series of your works here. I mean, this mm -hmm. one is really sky and clouds, and it's very mm -hmm. abstract, mm -hmm. but. Um, again, in the layering, you know, the complementary colors working a little bit, but um, they're actually they're more primary colors in, in this mm -hmm. one, the blue and the yellows, and they're just popping. I mean, you can I can't believe you can get the depth in the sky that's mm -hmm. happening and mm -hmm. there's distance and you can get all those things with an air gun, which is like blowing yeah. with a one inch end on this thing yeah. <laughs> uh, to understand what an air gun, you know, yeah. air than it looks like yeah but it's beautiful and this is about what is this like a 30 by 30 yeah it's a 30 by 30. Or it's a larger yeah. piece. So again you got to be moving and if people have ever worked with a heat gun it is kind of zoned you gotta yeah. you gotta move it around if you want to heat a large area you can't just yeah. stay in one spot because it'll burn a yeah. hole yeah. What, what kind of substrate do you work on um i work on cradled panels uh, yeah. but i also work uh, sometimes on um metal uh, copper surfaces, uh, salvaged steel, and and wood, uh, like salvaged wood sometimes right. too. But my my mainstay is a cradled panel. Yeah, it, and, does it and have yes. the absorption in it a little bit more so than like the metals just kind of would flow a little bit more, and the heat I guess would retain uh, the heat more with metal, would it not? Act, yes, it does. Yes, but I find that the, it actually sti when it's on the metal, it doesn't move around like on the wood. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even though the wood, does, the first layer probably yeah. seals the wood up. Yeah. Right. Yes, that's Initially. right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, you have to prime with clear medium, uh, clear and caustic medium as a protection layer, and then you will layer from there. Um, mm -hmm. On the metal, I don't have to do that, but I work with. Um, like the metal has been uh, roughed up or um, or even if it's rusted, it's got grab. So when I apply the encaustic, it kind of sticks. So that's, yeah. you know. So, so do you take workshops from around just to learn the different techniques and things that other people are developing that you didn't say that's not, I guess, findable somewhere other than on Google or an internet yeah. search somewhere on the processes? Well, I mean, I, I really actually started in 2005 with that class and I, I, I got a book, you know, that's how I mm -hmm. learned. Yep. <laughs> and, and then there was a bit of YouTube stuff, but it really was quite new. Um, it was, it, you know, starting its research. And um, so, yeah, I have taken um, uh, a couple of workshops uh, from people through the International Encartis in Caustic Artists Association. Um, they have an annual uh, event down in Cape Cod. And so I have taken some more, not, not workshops so much as just watching demos. Oh, okay. um, there's a lineup of several mm -hmm. artists and you just go from demo to demo and you watch them at work. So I've never taken an intensive, uh, you know, yeah. three day workshop. It's been mainly watching demos. So, and I, I just did one recently in, um, in Ireland um, in the fall. And so that's where I learned about uh, combining encaustic with um, a fresco. And so we'll uh, talk about that later too. Yeah. Talk about the frescoes, which is really interesting. Yeah. But I just yeah. like the fact that you can, I mean, this is such a versatile thing. Once yeah. you get used to manipulating with heat, 
and understanding. So what do you, is it oil paint out of a tube or is it a stick that you work with? Oil sticks? Is that what you mostly work with when you draw with them and apply? Um, yeah, like to color the wax, I'll, I'll uh, take a little bit of oil paint right. and stir it into the, into the medium and that colors it. The more wet or the more oil, the more opaque the color. And um, kind of the rule is about 20%. You don't want to go over 20% of oil versus medium because then it has could have issues drying. Um, and so I use, you know, I use the oil that way. But then kind of through the process, through the laying process, and particularly at the end, I apply oil sticks, which is really uh, oil paint kind of in a, in a big crayon. Yeah, um, it's like a lipstick. It's very it it it's, it glides on beautifully, and you can um, you can apply it to the surface, rub it into the surface, mm -hmm. and it adds further glow, further luminosity, um, especially when you're using transparent oil sticks over the surface, and so that adds greatly to the depth. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would have done on this piece. Um, you know, I would have had layers, but then uh, into the light area, I would have um, uh, put on some oil stick um, to get that glow, that light glow. So yeah, it, and it brings it forward quite nicely. Mm -hmm. yeah. have, have you ever used melted crayons like Crayola crayon? Have you tried anything like that? Yeah, no, I haven't. Uh, there's such a high wax content. I mean, I'm I'm only working with artist uh, level. Stuff quality stuff yeah and that's why you get the intensity of the color crayons wouldn't you know they just wouldn't have an pigment yeah i just remember years ago we were mm -hmm. as kids traveling in across canada and it was really hot and of course as kids we had peeled all the paper wrap off of all the crayons <laughs> we put all the crayons in this big plastic bag and of course mindlessly we threw it in the back window of the car yeah <laughs> and guess what it turned into one big glump of crayons. Yeah. It was like yeah. hot. They just yeah. melted everything together into one. Yeah. And uh, my dad cut up the pieces and we could color with multiple colors now. We had like <laughs> rainbow, everything was rainbow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. That reminds that me actually, of, uh, it reminds me of a story about, you know, like one of my most asked questions is, what, is it going to melt in my home? People yeah. are, you know, concerned about its wax, right? But the melting temperature, melting point of wax is 165 degrees. So oh. I literally have to hold a heat gun like right over the wax to get it, get it to melt. But I remember a story about someone had bought a painting somewhere in the south in the United States. Um, you know, it was 40 plus or whatever and, and put it in the trunk of their car and then <laughs> proceeded to shop for a few more hours, came back and their painting had slid, you know, <laughs> off the edge <laughs> of the surface. So, yeah. so yeah, yeah, that heat gets pretty intense in a car, but in a home, it's fine. And, and I say that if your painting is melting in your home, you've got bigger problems. So. <laughs> yeah. And what is the other, like the fragility of that, of the wax? <laughs> painting like the scratching aspect yes you could probably scratch it with a pin or a knife or yeah it becomes very textural when you start right and you do i guess like any other painting you have to For wrap sure. it properly and if you yeah. were to transport this would you put like a wax paper thing over it to transport yes. it yes wax yeah. paper yeah. is correct to create a barrier and then bubble wrap around that and, and yeah. so, so things are shipped like that foam. yes right. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I think it's I like mean, anything else, you have to care for your art uh, anyway, right? If you drop it, the vase, it'll break. You know, if exactly. You, yeah. yeah. Okay. But the key ingredient, like, um, it's it's not just beeswax, like, the, you know, there's the beeswax yeah. uh, content for sure, but it's the Damar resin. This is just an example of Damar resin crystals. Yeah. Uh, these are crushed up. And this is, um this adds shine and hardness to the wax. So, um, without this, it would, the painting would be too soft. So this is, and it acts also as an internal varnish. So there's kind of a glow or a, a shine to the surface because of the resin. Right. So this makes it, um, you know, more durable for sure. Yeah. And so it's very important that that is included in the, in the medium. So, so we're looking at, we're looking at some flowers here and mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's one of a couple of flowers we have in our series mm -hmm. here, but we, mm -hmm. this is, 
it just they're so sumptuous these things these mm -hmm. flowers are they they almost look like you're kind of looking through a rain window at the flowers outdoors right you're seeing yeah. this uh they're they're soft glow and they just kind of rather that's, than that's the, someone else little, the rain to me too yeah, yeah. Well, it does that rain glass look about it but in yeah. this in this sense for this style mm -hmm. but it they rather than depicting every blossom and every little mm -hmm. thing that could be there mm -hmm. this is a, a real different feeling of mm -hmm of a floral display right it's yeah. it's an interpret i've seen flower thousands of ways to interpret flowers yeah. i mean some are realistic and some are you know you can draw them in pencil and just mm -hmm. seeing them done in encaustic though it, yeah. it it has a a different kind of freshness to it you know yeah. there's you know there's, there's a nice there's a lovely mm -hmm. textural life to it you know yeah. and you've got nice contrasts and they're popping mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. they're not there but you see the other vegetation there as well and I think mm -hmm. um, leaving your imagination to find things in the foliage mm -hmm. is so important. Yes. Uh, otherwise you get bored with the piece of art that's on yeah. your wall. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So does it change a little bit in the daylight to the evening light um, in your house? Like, would you say if the lights aren't on and the light moves around, does it become more three-dimensional looking from an angle? Do you do the edges as well? Or do you? Um, yes, I, I sometimes paint the edges in encaustic, um, or I stain the sides depending on, you know, yeah. requests yeah. from people as well. Um, but yeah, it does appear different in different lights. And, and sometimes when I add a little bit of metallic powder to the mix, um, of course in a dim light, you're going to get the shine of that. Um, right. and, uh, so this, it, so this yeah. is an encaustic fresco. Mm -hmm. can, you explain, can you explain what an encaustic fresco is? Uh, <laughs> well, it's 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 a it's an experiment for me. Um, I went to, when I, I said that I was in Ireland at a workshop and I saw an artist by the name of Bettina Senhauser demonstrate her fresco technique. And so um, the first thing I did when I got home was order all the materials, and then um, I subsequently have gone just gotten back from in artist residency in Pooch Cove, Newfoundland. And that's where I thought I'd jump in and, and experiment with, with the, the combination. Um, I love that uh, it, they're both ancient techniques and uh, fresco is also very textural. So we've got super texture <laughs> when you combine the two. And, um, and so, yeah, it was uh, just, I'm just trying to find my way. Though she worked most, most, she works abstractly. I'm trying to find a way to work with it representatively. And, so, uh, uh, okay, a fresco is plaster. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it it's is. Plaster, it's plaster base, and you could texture that any way you want with a palette knife or yes. uh, a spatula yes. of some kind. Yes. So if you, and then you work. So you almost got to pre-plan how you want that. If you want a texture to the fresco, yeah. Uh, Rather than, can you buy a plaster board that, that works already prepared or do you have to do your own? Um, I, probably, but uh, you know, um, what this involved, like I guess the actual, like the whole process of plaster is about eight layers and she, she just uses the last two, you know, it, it's a simplified process. So it's not the a whole <laughs> gamut, you know, that Michelangelo would have used. It's the last mm -hmm. two layers. And it's that last layer that's applied very thinly that crackles when it dries. Oh. And so that's, and so, you know, it's hard to see that maybe from the photo, but if you get up close in the painting, you can see the, the crazing and the crackling throughout. And so it has this old world feel to it. Um, imperf imperfection. Um, it's, you know, it's it's a little bit more rustic and very highly textured. So mm. it, it's a visual feast, really, you know. Um, it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, it's getting your substrate to work with you rather mm -hmm. than against you, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of times yeah. we get a substrate and the first thing we want to do is cover up that white canvas. Just get yeah. rid of that. We get a sienna yeah. or an umber and we paint her down and then we work on top yeah. of it. But yeah. uh, mm -hmm. so this is the difference between, this is an oil painting. So you yeah, can the, you can see the textural difference between yeah. that and what we just saw. 
Yeah. And they're both flowers and different flowers, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. back to these. So this yeah. is our, go ahead. Yeah, no, I just, it's, I, I, I love, I love working gesturally uh, with expressive brush strokes. That's one thing that I can't maintain with the encaustic because when the heat is applied, the wax, any, any stroke that I put down generally kind of just melts out. Right. So I, I, it's very hard to retain my brush strokes. <laughs> so yeah. I, I love working with oil because I, you know, I, I just, I love that play. And this was done uh, plein air in France um, last summer. I w attended a residency there and uh, it was at the height of the sunflower season and the, the fields were glorious. And, you know, it's just. You were Van Gogh. <laughs> it was, it was pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, that comes through. There's a magic in there. I mean, mm -hmm. I can see the rhythms that you're building in the in 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 the greenery and the flowers and they they feel yeah there's something there's something about oil that's just mm -hmm. you you have to yeah. really uh, love about oil painting yeah, yeah. Uh, so you painted in in a residency yes uh, situation what happens when you get this whole body of work what do you what do you do how do you get that whole <laughs> Well, that was the learning curve that I went through this last year. Um, you know, you learn how to um, pick your sizes so that they pack up as a puzzle. And so you reduce the, you know, the overall amount. Um, and within caustic, I couldn't take or purchase cradle panels and ship them back and forth. It would have been too too costly so i went to a uh, lumber yard and had uh, some plywood cut down into pieces and i worked on those surfaces and then i shipped those back and when i got back cradled them afterwards so yeah yeah okay yeah you, you've got to you and when you do those kind of things where you go away a long distance it's expensive to ship everything back <laughs> yeah, it is yeah um but yeah. do you have problems with the taxation or the you know getting it through customs no not at all i mean that that was all taken I've care of that for us in france that's all you know yeah. um i've the, heard horror they, stories with people coming back from italy yeah and it's like oh they, they want, yeah is uh, yeah. one of the artists that I know she was there and it's it's a brutal process to ship your artwork home uh, yeah. going through customs yes she actually had to pay quite oh. a bit in, oh, in no. dollars and uh, as an artist you really don't make any money oh. at all to start with yeah. and then you're having to pay that is it's brutal and yeah. I just wondered if that was the case yeah no this is your other love I do I mean I love <laughs> He's so juicy, this guy. Oh. I mean, he's just coming in off the page. Um, <laughs> can you tell us about your bees? I mean, you mean you're dealing with you're working with a product of wax, which comes yeah. from bees. Yes. You've got a real you've got a real connection with this yeah. insect that yeah. is in trouble. Um yeah. and can you tell us a little bit about your I guess your environmental statement about it? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean yeah it, it, it's 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 not a not a good situation right you know um around the world yeah. no it's not it's absolutely horrifying to to think that you know we lose, lose these creatures i mean our own existence is in in dire straits yeah. so so yeah there's been there's been a lot of press about the bee i was about four years ago and i just i was thinking one day it's like i why don't I paint a bee? Uh, this is beeswax. You know, it just occurred to me, duh. <laughs> and <laughs> and, uh, and so I, it's just, uh, it's been, it's been quite a journey with these bees uh, you know, started out, people would buy a bee and then they, and they, they'd buy, a, you know, they're collecting them and they're making groupings of bees and it's, <laughs> it's wild, but um, yeah, no, I mean, it's a, it, it's a really, um, uh, intriguing you know life form and the textural possibilities um within it's caustic are, yeah. yeah the and legs the legs i just look at these thing and go you can hardly paint that look <laughs> in oils like you yeah. you would be there for many many hours figuring yeah. out what's going on and not that yeah. it's just easier to do with encaustic yeah. 
you're just looking at all those little pinholes and things. They just yeah. look like lobster claws. So they just have yeah, a, just got a little so tool and just poke, poke, poke to the surface and. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. so they, 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 that really makes the textures unique. Yeah. Um, I think artists are always looking for that unique mm -hmm. texture. That is yeah. their signature that yeah. they figured out how to do that, that maybe yeah. no one else has sort of figured that out yet. Yeah. And yeah. you're working with a heat gun and the guy said, oh, I can't work with a heat gun. Like you've already <laughs> got your own look and your own way of doing things. And yeah. you don't just jump in and do this type mm -hmm. of painting on day yeah. one. In yeah. cost uh, yeah. I can't imagine it. Yeah. But I love the abstractness of it, but it's almost yeah. like this. I've seen a lot of these scientific blow-ups of an insect and they just yeah. look like an ant head and they just look really weird. Like the eyes are. You know, yes, I know. Things and they look yeah. so cool. Right. And yeah. this is has a really nice abstract uh, yeah. thing about them. I guess the, we're trying to understand them. I think when you can yeah. do this and people can look at this, they maybe start understanding the insect better than just swatting the insect out of the way to get him out of your beer. Yes. Away yes. From, from you and back to the garden, you know, get over That's to the right. flower. Yeah. I, I did a, I did a big insect series, actually a, a blow up of insects and you know, the, the metallic surfaces and textures, I mean, they're just absolutely exquisite, but it's, it's a bug, you know, and, it's considered this lowly life form that we don't yeah. that we swat or crush and and you know when I when I got it, delved into it it's just like it was it was very very beautiful and and um, you know just I, I learned a lot uh, you know it's, it's more than just a bug and yeah. uh, so this particular one this bee is on a gold leaf background too so I, I yeah. I'm pushing the metallic sense of it and. Um, you know, um, so how big is this one? This one was 16 inches by 16 inches, I think. Yeah. 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 I think so, when you make them larger, larger than life, <laughs> people really get drawn into it. I mean, it becomes more than just a bug when it's larger, when it's mm -hmm. smaller, they can relate to it. Oh, that's a bug. I, I swat yeah. those. But yeah. when they become bigger, they say, I can't swat that one. That's pretty big. Yeah. You, know? yeah. <laughs> so you start understanding. Yeah. Yeah. The bug a little bit more. It's almost like he has yeah. a name. And yeah. <laughs> you, know, you should give a you should give a painting a title and yeah. And, and it becomes I guess somewhat friendlier yeah. and understanding. You know, you look yeah. at it like this. And yeah. I mean, as an artist, we sit there and we yeah. we design a, as we go and we pick yeah. away at it and we make this stand out and push that back yeah. and add color and I can yeah. see you working this. It's, it's a beautiful piece. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, anyway, that's the that's the one insect in the, in the show. Yeah. The, yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty beautiful mountains. Mm. And, uh, now this is I, a large, large piece. It's 40 by 40 inches by 40 inches. So, um, you know, uh, I, I, I do, I do enjoy actually working large because um, I can get a lot more flow and tip tipping going when, when I work larger and, um, you know, when I'm doing that on a small piece, I, I have to restrict myself a little bit. I can't let it get away or you get a runny mess, <laughs> a yeah. hot runny mess. And uh, and so on a larger painting, I can really let um, really let it go. So you can see in some areas of the painting where the drips are going sideways and, and at an angle or upwards. Um, and so I'm I'm uh, allowing the. I always say I'm allowing the encaustic to paint itself because I, by doing, but you know, through that manipulation, I end up with combinations and textures that I could never have painted on my own. The encaustic does its own thing when it's allowed to mix and to flow. Yeah. I've had watercolors work like that where I'll, mm -hmm. I'll do it and it's still wet and I'll go away for the half the day and I come back mm -hmm. in the morning and look at it and go, Oh my, look at it painted itself because you leave it yeah. on an angle and everything yeah. just melts out and settles down. Yeah. And it, I didn't see that. And it it's like it yeah. saw itself and it knew what to do. Yes. I love I love putting mystery in just in chance. Yeah. I mean yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I put I put this one in because it's the mountains and the water and the trees. Mm. I mean, these are I guess atypical types of unfortunately. Mm -hmm people paint them and they turn into postcards. They, it's so hard not to paint a mountain and Lake Louise and 
and get away with it. I mean, it just looks yeah. like the truth card. And you go, yeah. this is because it is textural and soft and you've got water and reflection of clouds in the water and the, in the, and uh, I don't know if it's three sisters or the mountains in the background. Mm -hmm. uh, is this from Banff area, this one? Yeah, that's um, uh, Lake, um, oh geez, you got me now. Yeah. Well, is that Rundle, Rundle Mountain? Or? Uh, in, um, the Canmore? Was it in Canmore? Or? Yeah, near Canmore. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, yeah. But I'm just saying, I'm just visually trying to, you know, talk about this a little bit. I said yeah. it's, yeah. You, you can depict everything here. I mean, you can talk, your medium can do skies beautifully, mm -hmm. insects, mm -hmm. animals, mm -hmm. and, uh, and water. And it has... Like you said, that old world look about it. it mm -hmm. Maybe that's what it is. And so mm -hmm. it's not that glossy, shiny postcard. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's, it's got a nice, it settles down nicely. And you're mm -hmm. dealing with little splatters and splushes. And I think uh, it's a nice depiction. And this is a large piece. And it looked beautiful mm -hmm. in somebody's home, mm -hmm. for sure. But I threw it in because of just saying you can do different types of landscape with it as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's and very versatile. here. Uh, it's dominantly green mm -hmm. uh, forest with a, a nice mm -hmm. pathway, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and on, on this one, um, particularly in the lower area, you can see that there's a lot of red, rusty, kind of a rusty, reddy brown <laughs> peeking through. So mm -hmm. I did kind of lay in a ground. I, I laid in that color first, and then I laid the green on top of it. And then it peeks through in places. I could also scrape away and then reveal oh, okay. what was down yeah. below. So the layering process was really important on this one to get let the light come through. Um, yeah. And so that's if you're seeing that on the um, you know on the screen there, that's the red peeking through. That was the under layer. So the oil stick would be that yellow that's skipping across the darker um, green. Would you do yeah. that? Um, no, that that that's all encaustic. Like it's yeah. really, I just use the oil stick to rub, rub the, um, you know, and get a More glow completely. on the color. Oh, okay. um, so I'm not actually like, um, if you if you were to lay um, oil stick on the surface, anyways, it has to be fused. It has okay. to be fused into the surface. So you it 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 embeds it. It's it gets right. mixed in, so it doesn't um, sit on top. And so generally, if I lay it on, I, I rub it in and then I fuse it and it sort of glows, goes into the color. Anybody who's been in north of Canada somewhere in arboreal <laughs> forests uh, mm -hmm. will have a scene like this in their head. I think anybody yeah. who has, I've walked at our, at our cottage where we have, yeah. uh, I've, I've been a pathway that looks almost exactly like that. And, oh, yeah. the, sun does, and the sun does burst through yeah. from the south like that uh, across the pathway. And it's like, yeah. you know, those things build that. I've seen that before feeling yeah. in your, in your heart. Yeah. And I think that's why people, they, they draw to draw to imagery that they can relate to. Mm -hmm. And it still has a really nice loose abstractedness. Mm -hmm. It's just sort of like yeah. you're on your bike and everything mm -hmm. is a little soft and out of focus as you're driving on your bike. Cause you can't, mm -hmm. you can't focus on everything where if you stop and take a photo of it, Mm -hmm. So do you work from photos that just bring that up? Do you work from photos? Um, oh yeah. I mean, I do, but, um, I, I guess I start from the photo is what I would say. And then after a while, the encaustic takes over. And you take the photo. Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. Yes. And un unless it's in a commission and people are very specific about what they want, you know, then I adhere to the photo more. But generally when I'm working from a photo that I've taken, I start with that and then I let my emotion take over and just, uh, play and and uh, color and you know it it can sometimes end up being quite different. So you do um, quite a few commissions and and requests from people. Yes, yeah, I do. Yeah. I, I know, yeah. probably forty to fifty a year or so, something oh, like sure. that. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean, <laughs> I work for small and and large. Um, you know, I mean, I can work from a six inch by six inch to a 60 by four feet by five feet you know so um i have a you know a big range of sizes so. I, I base everything maximum by what i can get in my vehicle 
<laughs> yeah. Isn't that the truth? It's all out at four feet wide. They can go yeah. four feet wide, and if you need to do a trip pick or something, that's, that's fine. But so true. I, can't, yeah, I don't do, I don't do yeah. six foot by six foot one pieces because I can't carry that yeah. in my yeah. vehicle. <laughs> yeah. So that's one. Tell us yeah. this now. This is a fresco. Yes. Uh, can you tell us about your residency at Pusco yeah. Cove, Newfoundland? That, yeah. We really want to hear about this. I mean, this is, yes. this is an amazing yeah. opportunity. So it's a one month, it's a 30 day or a one month residency? Yes, it is. It's a, it's a one month residency. It's invitational. Uh, you live alongside seven other artists. So there's eight of you. And uh, you each have your own um, thousand square foot apartment studio wow. combo. <laughs> Um, you do your own cooking um, and your day is your own. It's self-directed. There's no schedule. Uh, you can figure out, you know, with the group, if you'd like to do studio visits or meet for different things. Um, but yeah, you have all this time to create in a, in a really beautiful um, remote area of the world. You're, you're, you're steps away from this view. This is Pooch Cove. Uh, it's about a half hour north of St. John's and um, the residency is actually, it's the oldest re residency in Canada still running. It's, I think it started in 1990. Um, and so, um, yeah, it was, it was a real honor to be, to be asked to attend. And there were artists from all over the world. You have to be a painter. Um, so there was a painter from Uruguay, one from London, uh, the rest were Canadian, but often, um, some months, uh, they're from all over the world and there's no Canadians. It just depends on the schedule and you have one month to create. And, um, and then of course you're inspired by the, what, you know, what's around you. So I did a series of these fresco pieces, uh, depicting, uh, uh, Pooch Cove. And so I prepared the, the base, you know, with the two layers, uh, sort of shortened version of fresco, let it dry. It cracked immensely. You can see, um, you know, probably on the, on the screen, on the, on the, from the textures. And, um, but I think it really lent itself to this uh, really rocky, rustic, um, cracking kind of uh you know landscape that was that was before us um mm. and so i thought i thought the two went together really well this yeah. looks like it looks like an old photo a sailor would have had in his pocket that that worn look about it and yeah yeah like, definitely. i have never been there but um yeah. you know i've been to the east coast but not to newfoundland yeah. and it's yeah. i'm it's on my it's on my bucket list yeah you, well, but... it was a it was a frosty place. You can get that from the from the image there. Um, were, you you there know, were you there in February? February, or yes. So much snow and the wind. I mean, and it's a it's a cold. Um, you know, it's a cold, cold wind, right? So, um, yeah. I yeah, mean, we, yeah, we you're right on the Atlantic. Atlantic. Yeah, you're so, right on the Atlantic. Yes, sure. yeah, and we'd often go for morning walks or evening walks. You know, and it was different every time. Um, mm. And uh, so, yeah, it was very inspiring place to to create some art. Yeah, no, it's a it's a beautiful piece. I've seen a number of pieces from other artists that have gone there. Do you get a show? Or are you do you have shows in Saint Jean with that? Like arranged uh, for you or at Pooch Cove? Uh, no, um, we we didn't. Um, I suppose you know some artists have maybe in, in the summer months. You know, if they're attending, then that might be a little bit of an easier sell. Um, but but we didn't. Uh, we were snowed in a lot and couldn't really go anywhere. So as a result, most of us probably made more art than we usually do. Um, but you, you, when you're at the residency, you're actually the building houses also the James Baird Gallery, which is the mm -hmm. Uh, James Baird is is the one who conceived you know this this idea of a residency, and he's had the gallery for several years. So you're surrounded by art everywhere there. Um, it's a working gallery, and so um, often we would walk through and just mm -hmm. you know you'd see, all of a sudden you'd see a painting. I gee, I didn't see that one before. You know, I and mean, every day was sort of different, and so that was really inspiring to be around that art. Um, yeah. Not only the artists, not only the landscape, but also that the gallery itself. So the gallery, it was, yeah. Oh, it was, oh, 
it was a trip it was a triple threat that way i'm going too yeah. fast my finger is my okay. nose yeah there he is <laughs> yeah now you do you do portraits and yeah, I like I people portraits yeah. these are these are animals. yeah yeah um, you know, honestly, it's it's funny. I um, uh, it all started with a, our family dog portrait uh, several years ago, and uh, just for fun. And then someone said, "Well, would you do my dog?" And then, I, <laughs> and then someone asked for a horse, and and so this all led to animals. I had never planned to 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 paint animal portraits, but it just you know it's quite serendipitously uh, happened. And so I've done all kinds of different animals that I yeah. never, you know. I, I well, never I've seen, I've seen some of yours you did on actually on Barnwood. Yeah, yeah. A series, a series yeah, of yeah. So so it's been fun, you know. I, I just I, I'm an animal lover. I've always had pets and yeah. and so I love connecting um you know especially through the eyes, but just with the um the spirit of the animal. I mean often there's there's like um there's a symbolic um connotation behind it but it's trying to connect to that inner that inner soul i call them inner landscapes so i'm trying to connect with the landscape within yeah so, pet portraits they have to realize that it they are unique individuals and the okay. family that has that pet understands that the uniqueness yes. of an animal other ones yes. say oh that's just a scotty dog and he said yeah no, it's not. it has a different look each scotty dog has a personality yeah. for instance or this horse would have the same thing yeah and yeah and it's a family member you know i yeah, mean so, exactly. yeah, yeah it's yeah so back to an oil this is this yeah thing. so you can you do portraits in oil or in, in caustic Yes, yeah, yeah, I do. I do a lot of um, animal portraits in oil as well, yeah. and um, yeah, I mean, it just it's the lushness of that oil and um, the feeling. This one is on um, clear coated gesso. It's my favorite surface to work on. Um, so, I, I I love just the color of the linen. So it's clear coated with a a clear gesso. And so it acts as the ground. So I, I let it peek through in places you can see where I scumbled over just lightly or it peeks through. Right. And um, it just, um, it allows the painting to breathe. Yeah. I find. yeah I've never yeah. used clear gesso. Uh, something oh, to think about. yeah. I to, I yeah. To personally think yeah. about. That. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. This guy and I love. Then, he's just so, he yeah. want to give him a hug. He's just going yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. so loving. This one is like, I'm your best friend. Yeah. He, and I love these little kisses of blue that yeah. are, are drawn in there. Like they just, they yeah. make they make the painting. It yeah. really makes the painting with, against the umbers and the sienas. Yeah. And the dog. It's, yeah. it's really quite bittersweet when I look at these um, because most of these were commissioned after the, the, the pet had passed. Passed, yeah. 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 So, you know, here's another well, if you one. Can make, if you can make the client happy that you kind of nailed yes. it, they, yes. they are, you're their hero because yeah. they put their loved one on the wall and see them every day. Yeah. I mean, it's it, really different when it's like this than a photo. Yeah. The photo, it, is, the yeah. photo hasn't quite got it. I mean, you, yeah. you, you really got to work hard for yeah. a photo to yeah. um, capture that love. Yeah. This one has yeah. a lot of love in it. This is a beautiful piece, Kathy. This one yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's very gratifying. Um, and yeah. you know, and we have our our dog has passed now, and we have that painting of him. And I'm so glad we have that because we I walk by it every day, and he's he's with us, you know. So that's that's the power of it. Yeah. And a little sunset. A little um, sunset. The, the the middle of that painting I find quite interesting. This is why I included it. You can see the swirling, and this is an example of when when the heat is applied to the encaustic, and it swirls and dances and does its own thing, just like watercolor, as you were saying. Yeah, it just kind of pushes. Yeah, like, and it, it, it cools. It's moving as it's cool as as it's cooling. It's still moving, and then you just it's mesmerizing to watch, really. Yeah. And sometimes you get some really interesting effects. And so this what this was one painting that I re recall just being yeah. totally engrossed so in the moment. You get to a certain point where you think, oh, I can't do any more with this one. Let it dry. And you come back another day 
and yeah. you actually so-called you fix it, right? It, yes, it, of course. It fixes <laughs> itself where you 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 get I, I find sometimes even with a painting, you get lost in the painting. Yeah. And you've got to walk away from it for a little while and you come back and then you find your refocus. Oh, Absolutely. I gotta do this to make it better because this I was missing this. Uh you get that as well with working with I could see that with a fluid thing that you gotta heat up and move it and it's gonna yeah. stop and start. Do I add more? Do I take it away? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, with encaustic, you, you can't just um, dive in and start painting. You know, you've got to melt your wax. So you yeah. you sort of have to plan ahead. So half an hour, you know, the, your wax is melted down and then you can begin. So, um, yeah, when you know you're, you're, you're going there, you got to prepare. And then um, as, as the wax is melting down, I'm looking at the painting, figuring out, you know, what am I going to do to save this one? <laughs> <laughs> so do so, you have to work with a mask or what do you use for? Um, I don't. Studio? Yeah, I don't. I don't work with a mask, um, but I have, I, I'm just tilting this here. You can see my setup. Um, I have a um, range hood fan that we've installed. So it draws the, the fumes and the air out. Um, right. Okay. Uh, I did it when I first started. I worked out of a spare bedroom and with an open window. And you know, in the prairies, when it's forty below, um, <laughs> you're not you're not painting. So I I couldn't paint year round. And now I can because of this. I've got a proper studio with all the right ven ventilation, ventilation and or air exchanger or something. Yeah, need that. right, exactly. And I don't get a dry throat. I don't, you know, because that's that that is not that is something. Well, a, lot, to, a lot of people develop allergies. Yes, I've heard. Yeah. Probably yeah. Probably from not only do you work with the rubber gloves on at all, or no, I don't. Do you, do you just work the bare hand and. Yeah, I prefer yeah. to get my hands dirty. Through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to like well, it's a very wash them. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very tactile um, medium, and I need to feel it. I need to. You yeah. like to peel the wax off your finger. You're waxing your hands all the time. Yeah, yeah. You probably have very yeah. nice soft, your soft hands because I think. Yes, that's right. You know, the wax treatment, right? You get yeah. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, people pay big dollars to have wax treatments on their hands. Oh, you know, I know they do. <laughs> you get you won't get arthritis anyway, right? No, you have that's the heat, the best heat part. <laughs> so we'll end on this one. Beautiful yeah. piece again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just walk through the the long grass and the trees in the background. I can feel it. I mean, yeah. I want to be there right now, and it's spring and it's trying to get warmer. Yeah. But we had warm yesterday, and it's minus fourteen today. So it's oh, like yeah. it's spring, right? Give it's it a little summer. bit, yeah. take a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, there yeah. there is uh, a beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. Where was this? Where was this done? Uh, this well, I, I actually did this one at Pooch Cove in Newfoundland in February. Oh. Uh, there was a ridge behind my studio that I looked out on, and there was uh, trees, and so that. I mean, okay. it there wasn't a sunset like that, <laughs> but of course, you know, I played around with the light. I think I'm in my red uh, my red period right now, so I've been doing oh, a lot of red. Well. <laughs> When you're dealing with a whole bunch of snow around you in a residence, yeah. you want to add a bit of warmth to what you're yeah, doing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But no, it's been yeah. it's been great seeing your work, and I, you know, I love uh, I love what you're doing. I mean, it's unique. I think it's very Canadian, and I and I and I'm really loving you for that. It's kind yeah. of a, I love showing the world that you know we have we have very very creative artists and doing a lot of very unique different things and i mm -hmm. think it's not everybody just like you said paints out of the tube yeah. you know well, you know you you're doing yeah. very very good work thank oh. you oh, thank, thank you. you for joining yeah. us oh, oh there yeah. he is. it's been an yeah. evolution <laughs> <laughs> hi hi david you have to in your you get a little put the mic back on you there you, go. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you got me at the first one because with the with the, with the scottish highland oh <laughs> yeah had, well, I walk through the woods here every morning, and we have a, a small herd of them. Oh, and, uh, they and they just, you know, they don't care. They just. Oh, you know, I know. They're so they docile. Just, they just, they just wander. Yeah, know? yeah. It's uh, and, and and when I saw that right from the get go, I thought, wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Lovely, beautiful stuff. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and let's go to the sixty-four thousand uh, dollar question, which of course is now everybody wants to ask. Oh, 
if you'd want to purchase something, what, what's a, is there a, a price range where, where, you, where you're sitting in? I know your commission work. Commission yeah. work is different. Yeah, for but, sure. Um, I mean, on the little, you know, a little what, little itty bitty ones. Go. I mean, we're starting maybe a hundred, and then it can go up to about six thousand for the the really big pieces. So yeah, that's a good yeah. range. That's a yeah. good range. Yeah. So <laughs> well, it's a lot. It, it's a lot of work and knowledge required to put this together. I mean, it's not only. I've never, I've never, I've never seen it before, and I, I, yeah. I, I think if I'd have seen it. I mean, what I thought, well, it was just not real, if you know what I mean. Right, <laughs> yes. But, but yeah. The idea of having the, the art and the texture, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's um, I'm, I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm saying that because you. you're on the show. I, you like, get I, like, I like this stuff. I like thank it. You get a little smell. Does it get that nice smell of in your house? Oh, yes. I should have oil? mentioned that. Yeah, see, I, I my nose is gone now, so I can't really smell it much <laughs> anymore. But everybody that like that it buys a painting oh i love it. you're you know i can smell your work as soon as i walk into the room i'm like yeah. i can't smell it yeah we've got everything now we've got uh, i always there. thought that it would make a great all the senses right touch yeah. sight and smell yeah. not taste though <laughs> yeah, not taste. i i always thought it'd be it'd be a great um I guess uh, a body wash for for a man, right? You'd have that smell of oil and wax. Yes, know? right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. You would draw, yeah. You'd draw, you'd draw bees like like bees. Oh, <laughs> and when I've painted outside, actually wasps too. They come and they're investigating. Oh. I, I when I was in France in my studio, I had a lined up of dead bodies everywhere <laughs> because they were jumping right into the hot wax. And of course they're yeah. done. So I was the fishing them out all the time. <laughs> and I, I've, yeah. seen, I've seen those sunflowers uh, fields yeah. in France and you, you, yeah. you just, you just captured that. Oh, I, was there. Yeah. Yeah. I was doing something else and I, I, I turned around and saw a, this blaze of color. I thought, Hey, I know oh. that. And then oh, you pointed yeah. to the story. Wonderful. They're glorious. They're, it's just, it's, it was absolutely glorious standing in that, you know, in those yeah. spaces. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, all, all my work, I, it's, it's about the power of space. That's really what I'm trying to, you know, um, get across that so that people can be in that moment and feel that energy and, and just immerse themselves in it. So thank you. Well, we well, got a hint of it that. today. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> People Sorry, can do that though too. They can go to your website and they yeah. can look at yep. your and they the links will be uh, below. Contact you be below. on the bottom. And okay. uh, we appreciate you being part of Artists in Canada as well. And I we really enjoy talking with you today. And I uh, appreciate that very much. Oh well, um, it's an honor, and and I thank you for for asking. And uh, I'm just really excited that i was able to share this with with you and your well, viewers and you see, you see, this whole this whole honor thing it's just that what you've done is allowed us to look inside your head <laughs> and into, into your imagination you. and that for us truly is an honor oh yeah. wow yeah. we appreciate it very yeah. much yeah. yeah thanks so much well thank you everybody thank you paul thank again you. We're, we're excited to see who we're going to be seeing next on uh Oh, okay, we have another one. Today. Yeah, we've got him. We've got him queued one right after the other. <laughs> okay. He's um, on it. <laughs> he's on it. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thanks Thank you. so much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Have Thanks, a great day, guys. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye.